Hi there, this is HJ. In this video we'll finish the custom slider that was not completed last time. In the last video we modified the UI Toolkit's default slider. Our goal was to make it more visually appealing and provide clear feedback to users. The slider is going to be further polished in this direction. Here's what we'll do in this video. First, a bubble-shaped element is added and follows the slider's dragger. The bubble has a label which displays the current value of the slider. The filled bar and bubble's color can be changed according to the slider's value, if you specify the colors. Lastly, the bubble appears only when the slider is manipulated. Let's go back to where we left. We'll add a bubble element to the slider. We are well aware of how to generate a visual element at runtime, because it was covered several times in the last video. So I'll make it style first this time. Although the style can be directly written in the USS file, I prefer making a style in the UI builder. I think it's much easier and more intuitive. Add a visual element as a child of the slider. Set its position property to absolute. I prepared a bubble texture for it. Apply the texture to the background's image and set its size properly. Extract all the modified properties into a new style class. I'll keep this bubble element for later uses. Just turn off its display. Declare a variable for the bubble element. Go to the method where visual elements are created at runtime. Create a new visual element and make it a child of the slider. You may wonder why I don't make it as a child of the dragger. It would follow the dragger as well. But making it the dragger's child means other properties such as scale and rotation are also affected by its parent. It can limit animation works later. Therefore I'll add the bubble as a sibling of the dragger just in case. Name the element and it will help when we debug our UI. Apply the style we've just created to it through add to class list method and set its picking mode to ignore. It won't intercept user input. Let's check out what we've done so far. A bubble shaped element is generated at the origin point of the slider. In the UI toolkit debugger, there is an element called bubble as a sibling of the dragger. It's time to place the bubble accurately. Currently there are two methods placing the dragger. One sets the starting position of the new dragger. The other sets its position whenever the slider's value is changed. We'll use the later. I will modify the code so that the bubble and the new dragger are positioned by the same converted coordinates. The both are anchored to the dragger with their respective offset. What we need is to get the bubble's offset and subtract it from the converted coordinates. The detailed explanation is in the last video. If you find it difficult, please watch the video first. It looks like the bubble's center is positioned correctly. Move up the bubble to make its tip point to the dragger and adjust its position on the x-axis to account for the shadow in the texture. Now the bubble is anchored to the dragger, but only when it moves. You need to set the bubble position from the beginning. Copy the code and paste it into the other method, which sets the starting position of the dragger. In the last video, I said the float type value sent with the value change event could be used later. It can be taken advantage of in many ways. I'll interpolate the color of the bar and the bubble with this value. It will make the bar and bubble's colors change according to the slider's value. Declare two color type variables, make it public so we can specify the colors in the editor. Let's set the two colors. I chose yellow and red. The value sent with the change event has two properties. What's the difference? You move the dragger from 5 to 10 for example. The previous value is 5 and the new value is 10. We need the new value. In the value change callback method, set the filled bar's background color using color linear interpolation. I'll round the float value in advance because a label that will be added shortly will use the rounded value. The rounded value is put into the last, the t parameter. Our slider has a range between 0 and 100. 
it means the t-parameter has the same 0 to 100 range. In unity linear interpolations, the t-parameter should be between 0 and 1. Divide the value by 100. Next, it's bubble's turn. Since the bubble element has a background image, we should set the image tint color instead of the background color. Let's see if the color actually changes according to the slider value. It's working fine except one thing. The bubble's color stays white until the slider gets user input. It's because the colors are set in the value changed callback method. The colors should be set in the initializing method as well. We don't need interpolation here. Just assign the same color. Of course, you can choose any colors you like. Color interpolation according to the slider value was completed well. Now it's time to put a label on the bubble indicator. I'll use the test bubble again. Although I added a label to the bubble, no text shows up. I increased its size to 46, but no use. Go to the display and you can see it's set to none. What happened? In front of the property name, there is a small curly brackets. Click it and then choose go to selector. With this menu, you can find out which selector affects this property. It's the label type selector I made in the last video. The selector's purpose is to hide the label in the default slider. Since it's a type selector, it influences all the elements with the same type. I should narrow down the selector's scope so that it only hides the default label. I'll take advantage of the child selector. Insert a right angle bracket between two selectors, my slider and label. It will only affect the label type element, which is a direct child of the my slider. Since the label in the bubble is not the direct child, it will show up. Increase the size and make it center aligned. Adjust its position in the bubble. Everything looks okay. Change the text color to white and then extract all the change properties to a style class. Go back to the script. Declare a variable for the label. Create a label and make it a child of the bubble. Apply the class we've just created to the label through add to class list method. Let's check if the label is added to the bubble. In the UI toolkit debuggers hierarchy, you can see the label. Put some text in the text field. The debugger is quite useful for simple tests like this. Now that we checked the label is working, feed the slider's value into it. We finally reached the last part. Currently the bubble is always exposed. We're going to make the bubble appear only when the slider is manipulated. To be more precise, the bubble should appear only when the dragger is moved. Let's take a closer look at what's happening when we move the dragger. Open the UI Toolkit Event Debugger. While the UI Toolkit Debugger shows detailed information of UI structure and style, the Event Debugger provides in-depth information of UI events. In the Event Type Filter dropdown, check all. Play the scene and move the dragger. A lot of UI events are generated and logged with the timestamps. Among them you can see Capture Event. What is Capture Event? When I move the mouse over the buttons, each shows its hover state. They respond to input. What about pressing a button and hold it down? I can freely move my mouse as before, but other buttons no longer interact. It's because the press button is capturing my mouse or pointer. As soon as I release the button, the other buttons begin to respond again. When the mouse is captured, the pointer or mouse capture event is triggered. When the mouse is released, the capture out event is triggered. We are going to register callbacks to the two events to hide and show the bubble. In the start method, register two callbacks to the two events. I put a simple debug message for each to see whether it's working.
It seems to work as expected. Let's add transition animation as the final polishing. Go back to the UI Builder. In the Style Sheet, select the Bubble Selector. We are going to animate two properties, Scale and Opacity. Select Scale in the property. Set 1 second for the duration and ease out elastic for the easing. Add another transition for opacity. Select opacity in the property. Set 0.1 second for the duration. For a transition animation to take place, we need another state or style. Here the bubble in a hidden state is needed. Add a new selector in the style sheets. Set its scale to 0.5 in both X and Y and opacity to 0. Let's preview the transition animation. Drag the hidden selector to the test bubble which already has the normal bubble selector. The bubble disappeared. Delete the hidden selector. You can see a nice bouncy animation. The current animation isn't bad, but I'd like to fix one thing. When the bubble grows, its transformation pivot is at the center. If the pivot is at its tip, it would be much nicer. Select the bubble selector. In the transform, set its origin to bottom center. Add the hidden selector and delete again. All the animations are ready and the test bubble is no longer needed. Go back to the script. The bubble should start in the hidden state. Add the hidden selector to its class list. The capture event is triggered when the dragger is clicked. It means the bubble shows up at that moment. Remove the hidden selector from the class list. The capture out event is triggered when the dragger is released. The bubble has to disappear. Add the hidden selector to the class list. We finally created all the elements we plan to add to our custom slider. That's all for this video. If you visit my channel, you can see other interesting Unity related works, especially UGUI animation and effects. Thank you for watching.